Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at a pretty interesting problem, brick wall. So the premise of the problem is that we're given a two dimensional array that is supposed to be a brick wall. Every value in this two dimensional array is an integer. Every integer corresponds to a single brick. The value of that integer, for example, one in this case tells us the width of that brick, right? So this is a brick of width one. Now you can see that there's a brick of value two, therefore the width of that brick is also gonna be two. And our goal is to take a line from the top of the brick wall right over here and then go all the way through the brick wall to the bottom of the brick wall. And our goal with this line that we're doing is to minimize the number of bricks that we're cutting. Like take a look over here, if we go through this way, right? We're cutting through all six layers of bricks, right? We can see the height of this brick wall is six layers, right? And you can see that every single one is being cut, right? We're cutting this one, cutting this one, cutting this one, cutting this, this, this. So that's bad, right? We're cutting six bricks, but we want the minimum number of bricks that we have, that we can cut, right? Take a look at this red line that they drew for us. Over here, now we're cutting one brick, right? This two, but okay, take a look. There's a gap over here between these two bricks. So we're not actually cutting these. And again, there's a gap over here, so we're not having to cut through a brick. Okay, but there is a f there is a brick here, it's four, we do have to cut through that, right? And then the last two, there's a gap, so we do not have to cut any bricks. So in total, when you look at it, we cut this brick and we cut this brick, so we ended up cutting in total two bricks. And one last point that they mentioned for us is we cannot draw the line on the left and right side, right? Basically over here, right? Clearly we, over here, we wouldn't cut any bricks, right? That would be zero cuts, but we can't do that. And we also can't go over here, right? So that's pretty obvious, I think. But other than that, that's just our goal, right? We can cut anywhere we'd like, but our goal is to minimize the number of bricks that we have to cut through. So the good thing for us is we don't even have to draw a picture because they did give us this example brick wall. So that's what I'm gonna use. And let's take a look at the brute force solution, what that would possibly end up being. Notice how every one of these rows has the exact same width, right? That's always gonna be guaranteed. So we can see that this row, the first row has a width of one plus two, plus two, plus one. So that's in total six, right? And every uh, corresponding row is gonna have that exact same width. So one thing we could try is for every position so at position one over here, at position two over here, at position three, position four, and position five, right? We can't cut over here and we can't cut over here, but the other positions we can try to cut through, right? We can brute force it. Let's go through this, see how many cuts we have to go through. Okay, there's one cut, two cuts, three cuts. So that took three cuts, right? What about this position? How many bricks do we have to cut? One, two, three, don't have to cut this, four, five. So that's five, that's definitely not the minimum. And let's take a look at this one now. We don't have to cut these two. We have to cut two over here and then cut one more down there. So that's also three cuts. Let's take a look at this one. We know that this is our solution. We're cutting one brick and cutting one more and that's it. So that's two bricks that we ended up cutting. This last position, we're gonna end up cutting one, two, three, four bricks. So from taking all these values, right, we just brute forced it pretty much, and we're gonna take the minimum, it's two, and that's gonna be our output, just like they tell us. But notice how we're kind of doing a little bit more work than we even need to. Now, imagine if instead we had a brick wall like this, right? Let's say this was uh, maybe 100, right? And maybe uh, another 100 over here, right? We would end up, if, if we did this brute force algorithm that we did, we'd end up with like 100, uh, v values over here, right? And then we have to go through the entire, you know, cut every single time and then do the same thing with over here, right? But how about we skip that? How about instead of going through every single position in our brick wall, we instead only identify the gaps in every single row that's available. And we just count for every single row. So we count 
the gaps. We're going to use a data structure to count the gaps of every single row in total, right? So we see that there's a gap, for example, in position one over here, right? There's another gap over here in position three. The reason I say this is position three is because we take one plus two, add them together. That leaves us with position three over here, right? And then add two again to that. We see one last gap right over here, right at position five. So in our count gap data structure, and by the way, this is going to be a hash map because that's going to lead us to the most efficient. The key of our hash map is going to be the position, right? The X position, right? So one, three, five in this case, right? And the value in our hash map is going to be the count of gaps, right? The count of gaps. What do I mean by that? Let's just initialize our count gap so far. So sorry about this being a little messy, but remember, so our count gap is going to be a hash map, right? So at position one, which is our key, right? At position one over here, what we're going to do for the value is see is say that we found one gap so far in this position, right? And also for three, we found one gap in that position, right? Same thing with five. We found a single gap so far. So right now, well, all we did was go through the first row. So we're done with the first row. All we're going to do now is go through every single row, continue to update this count gap hash map. And then finally, at the end, what we're going to do is find the minimum value of it. And that's going to be the number of the minimum number of cuts that we have to do. And at the end, we're going to go through our hash map, look at every single value, and we're not going to look for the minimum value. We're going to look for the max value in our hash map. And the reason why we're looking for the max is because remember, we want to minimize the number of bricks that we have to cut right? So we don't want to cut bricks. So in other words, since we want to minimize the number of bricks we cut, we want to maximize the number of gaps that we go through. So when we can maximize the number of gaps, right, we find the max, the position such that the, the number of gaps that we have to do is maximal, then what we can do is take the total number of rows, right? The total number of rows and then subtract the number of gaps from that. And then that's going to lead us with the total of the number of bricks that we have to cut, right? So that's going to be our result. And let me just show you one last and so let's just take a look for this example. We have six rows, right? So we want to uh, subtract from it the total number of maximal gaps that we have. And we know that the max number of gaps is in this position, right? So we see here there's two gaps and then there's two more gaps down here. So the number of gaps is four, right? So six minus four gives us our result, which is two, right? So this two basically tells us that these this is the minimal number of bricks that we're gonna have to cut, right? And I can show you that the cuts are happening with this brick and this brick up over here that I basically crossed out because I crossed out that row. So I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of this example, fill up our hash map, and then and then it'll basically be clear what we're doing. So we went through the first row. Let's go through the second row now. So here we see there's one gap, right? Three. So again, in our hash map, we can take this two, this one over here and replace it with a two because uh, we're just adding one, right? Over here, we see another gap. This is position four, which is not yet in our hash map. So we're going to say at key value four, we have one gap that we've identified. Now we're done with the second row, third row time at position one. Another gap has been identified. So this one can be changed to a two. So this is going to get a little bit messy. And the next spot in our hash map over here, right, this is at position four, three plus one is four. So we're gonna take this one value and now replace it with a two. Fourth row, we see there's only one gap at position two. So let's add that to our hash map, position two. We're gonna have one gap so far. Done with row four. Row three, at position three, we have a gap. So let's replace this two and add one to it. So we have three gaps at position three. 
We have another gap at position four, so let's replace this two with a three. So now we're done with the fifth row on to the last row at position one. We have one more so we can update the count and that's going to be now three. We see one more gap at position four. So this three is going to be incremented into a four. So I hope that this is readable. This is a four over here. And lastly, we see at position five, one more gap. So let's just cross this out and say it's two. But so scanning through our entire hash map, what do we find? We find that this value is the highest four. That tells us at position four, because that's the key, key position four, right over here. We had four total gaps, right? So that's the maximum number of gaps. And we can basically now use our formula to compute the result. Just like I showed you earlier, it's going to be six minus four equals two. That's our result. That's what we're going to return. So this problem is actually not too difficult once you can understand this sort of equation and the need for a hash map. Let's get into the code. It's actually pretty short. So I'm going to have that count gap hash map, just like I mentioned, and I'm going to have one uh, key value pair so far in it, zero, zero, basically telling us at position zero, we have zero gaps, which makes sense. And this is needed because we don't want our count gap hash map to be empty. It's possible that it could be empty at the end, and I'll show you why we don't want that. But remember, we're mapping the position to the count of gaps of brick gaps so now just like in the picture we're going to go through every row in the wall and i'm going to use a variable total which is basically going to tell us the current position we're at the reason i'm calling it total is because remember we're adding each brick in the row to tell us the uh, position right so basically what i'm going to do now is go through every brick in this row so for every b in this row but I'm not going to include the last brick because remember, we don't want to count the gaps at the rightmost position, right? We can't cut the rightmost position, right? So what I'm doing in Python is basically going through every brick in this row except the last one. I'm not including the last one. So all I'm going to do is take every single brick and add it to total, which is going to tell us the position that we're at, right? So the total is really referring to the position. So, and once we do that, I'm going to go to our count gap, say that position for that position, I'm going to increment it by one. So I'm going to say one plus what it already is. And it's possible that this total has not been added yet to our uh, hash map. So I'm going to do a little Python stuff. So I'm going to get that value from our hash map total is the key and if the key does not exist it's going to return a default value of zero that's what i'm doing and this is a convenient way to do it in python so we're getting the current count of this position adding one to it and we're going to do that for this row and we're going to do that for every row in the brick wall and now what we're going to do is we're going to return the result but remember there was an equation that we had to compute that result so it's going to be the total number of rows how can we get that we can get the length of this wall basically the the number of the rows and then subtract from it what are we going to subtract remember in our hash map in our count gap hash map we had a list of values and from those values what did we want we wanted the maximum value so we're going to take the max of this array now the reason why we initialized our hash map like this is basically what if our count gap hash map was empty what would we want it to return we just want it to return zero which is why i had zero zero over here right so this is the solution right it would there's nothing more that we need than that we had a hash map so really the time complexity of this is not too bad we're just going to end up iterating through every single brick in the wall so that's the time complexity the total number of bricks that were given basically the size of our 2d array and that's also going to be the memory complexity the number of bricks so i hope that this was somewhat helpful for you if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot and i'll hopefully see you pretty soon thanks for watching